Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at Wendover Railway Station today. This is Wendover on the old Great Central and Metropolitan Joint Railway. That's looking towards Aylesbury. And looking that way, that's looking towards London Marrowbone. You can just see the track rising up to Dutchland Summit. So if they were to ever run a steam special through here, probably make quite a lot of noise coming through here. We're just walking under the modern footbridge, which was added in 2013. It's got lifts, so it provides accessible access to the um, down platform. Here's the original station building. So the station opened in 1892. Now the old footbridge is still there. The noise you can hear, that's the Wendover bypass on the other side of the fence. Just have a look at the old footbridge. Um, it's still in situ, but they've taken out the steps. It's a segregated bridge. So the other side of the bridge is a public footpath. You can just see the bridge carries on over the bypass. So it's quite nice. The old bridge is still there, but also that everyone can access the platform. So you effectively get the best of both worlds. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna leave Wendover Railway Station and we're gonna go and explore a former railway line which used to run from here to the RAF camp at Halton. It wasn't a particularly long railway. It was only about one and three quarter miles long, but it would have run from just up here. This is where the goods yard would have been. Inevitably, it's now a car park. I'll just let you see. That's the other side of the bridge. See what I mean? It's a segregated bridge so the old station side is no longer used um, so it went to RAF Halton opened in 1917 closed in 1963 there was also a narrow gauge line up at Halton which um, we will try and have a look at some of the track bed but bearing in mind it will be in an RAF camp so um, it may not be possible to completely do the track bed of narrow gauge line but I certainly intend to show you where some of it was so as we get to the end of the platforms here somewhere around here would have been the platform where you could have got on the train for the um, people in the RAF and whoever else to travel on the passenger service that did once run up the branch to RAF Halton and as I said there'd have been a goods yard here the line was mainly used to take coal to the boilers that was its main raison d'etre to supply coal to the boilers for the RAF camp but then they were later replaced with oil boilers and the oil was delivered by road tankers so that was like your first nail in the coffin of the railway the narrow gauge line bought um, some wood down from the, the slopes of wendover woods and some of them were then transported on standard gauge line to the main lines to be used as uh, pit props for the trenches in france and various other just anywhere that wood needed to go really so um I'm going to carry on up here when I get to the point where the track bed curved away from the old Great Central Railway um, we'll, we'll follow it and uh, through the suburbs of Wendover out towards RAF camp at Halton so and this is where we are still at this point parallel to the old Great Central Main Line. So here we are just um, a couple of hundred yards further up the old Great Central main line towards Aylesbury. Um, the line we're following would have run here. So you can see there's an industrial estate behind the station. Over there, that's Wendover Woods. Now, it was from the foothills of Wendover Woods, further along the hill. That's where some of the timber that the narrow gauge railway transported to the standard gauge railway would have been. Now, as we come along here, it is a public footpath. It doesn't look much like one. We get to these gates, which are chained up with a padlock, but um, that's obviously just to stop anyone driving through because if you look here there's a public footpath sign and um, you can clearly see the footpath goes around here so I'm not trespassing um, and this is an RAF land there was a, a dog barking at me in one of the houses down there um, so this is where the track bed starts to curve away from the Great Central Main Line so there's one more industrial unit there with the Great Central Line over there. The track bed now curves off down here as the, um, well, I would say a public footpath sign shows us, but it seems to be a sign with no, no lettering on. But there is another footpath one here on the side of this sign. So now we are going on to the old railway track proper. So as I said, I don't actually think this had a proper passenger service for anyone who wanted to use it. It would have been purely for people traveling to and from the camp. So I don't know how many track bashers ever got the chance, but I'm just gonna show you this. See, you can see now um, we've got about half of the um, track bed on this side of the fence. You can see the embankment, the houses being down there. Never been down here before. So um, 
I'm kind of, I've done a bit of looking at maps and thought, yep, this is where I want to go to today. So we're just going to explore it as I go, really. Um, I have seen, walked along odd bits of the track in the past, but never been along this section. So we're just going to follow it, really, and I'm just going to show you the highlights of um, this what I think is a fairly little known railway. Not so many people know about it and probably because it wasn't, you know, part of the National Rail Network. It was a private line. Last time I did a railway a bit like this was when I walked up to Leakbrook Hospital. She's putting a link on the screen now. Um, although that wasn't military, that was a hospital, but that had an electric tramway. So um, this one wasn't electric. It would have been steam from when it was built in 1917, but... Um, it was replaced with diesels fairly early on in about 1940 the diesels took over so we now get to here there's a little gate and we come out onto another path so i think the track bed probably goes off through that person's garden this is an existing lane um that way would take us up to well, let's go up here We're, we are deviating off the railway track bed but i've had a little idea be able to show you a couple of um things from what well, I think this is going to take us to. We're walking up a slope now, which will take us over the Great Central track bed and the Wendover Bypass. But I'm thinking we might get quite a nice view over the Vale of Aylesbury. So uh, let's see what we find. I can already see in the distance, I can see Coombe Hill. I have done a video there because that's where, that's the end of the South Bucks Way. A few years ago, I walked the length of the South Bucks Way. So I really like doing long distance or medium long distance footpaths. Um, so, this is Great Central Railway. If you look that way, you can see Wendover Station in the distance. And then this is the Wendover Bypass. Now, if you're wondering what that construction work over there is, that is HS2. Now, I'm not sure the exact route of HS2, and I don't want to get too um, into it, but I believe it's possibly going to run along here somewhere. And then there you've got Coombe Hill um, in the distance. And looking that way, see the Vale of Aylesbury. So I just want to have one more look at the, um, as I said, the, where the railway left the Great Central Main Line. So from, let's go back to the railway bridge. This is the more modern road bridge. And this is the more friendly railway bridge. Perfect for watching trains if they had a bit more variety on this line. So you can see that warehouse there. The track would have curved off behind there off in that direction and we've really come to the end of Wendover it's fields beyond here so I'm going to go back down there now and uh, follow the railway in that direction in the direction of RAF Halton well, I'm now back on the edge of residential Wendover this isn't the old track bed but this is just a farm track but it goes up a bit of a hump here and crosses the old track bed so here the track would have crossed at a skewed angle so where we last saw the track bed it disappeared into someone's garden well over there there's some 1980s houses um i guess that's about when they were built and the embankment's been demolished but then it reappears here just for this short section so you can see it had gone that way so they've crossed this this track at a skewed angle now if you have a look here this is where i find Walking on old railways get fascinating when you find something that remains. Look at this. The old gate post is still here. So a gate would have hung across that and they could have closed um, the gate on this little lane to passing trains. The trap bed would have then carried on down there, but it appears the embankment has been removed again. So I'm going to have to follow the footpath on down here and pick it up again. Now, just show you again over there. That's Coombe Hill and the Great Central Railway ran over there. Um, we're going to go along here and when I get to the end of this lane by the field, um, should be able to, there should be a footpath that heads in the direction of where the railway line used to go. So it must have gone through those houses there. Um, now, yeah, I can see a gate over there. So I'm going to walk across this field now and uh, try and find the railway track bin again. So I walked through the field, I came to a little footpath and then that took me out onto this track which goes to these allotments. Now the railway track bed is just on the other side of that fence. 
I could sort of see glimpses in people's gardens where the trap bed fairly obviously had run, but I didn't want to put that on film because you know it, it is someone's garden, but I could quite clearly observe it from from the, the path. Now we get to here, we crossed the old road which would have gone to Ellsbury. This would have been the main road before the um, bypass was built. Now if you have a look at this house here, this is built right on the track bed. So that would have been built after 1963 once the track had been taken up. So as I said, it would run parallel to this track. And then um, the railway line would have had a level crossing just here, which I'll show you in a moment, crossing the road. And then it have continued on up towards the RAF camp at Halton. So, so far it's been a bit fragmented what we can access, but I'm hoping beyond here, we might be able to access more of the track bed. So this is the main road. Now this is where it gets quite interesting because it had come across here and where those gate posts are there, they're possibly the original ones. That is where the railway line would have crossed the road. I'm just going to cross the road myself on a pedestrian crossing and we're going to have a closer look. So the railway line would have been there where those trees are. And then it would have... Um, so the, I'm going to go down that footpath. It would have gone down there. So where this house here is, if you look, that's interesting. There's a post lying on the ground. That's probably the original gate post. And possibly these are too. I actually remember as a child, it used to come up this way before the bypass was built. And this house here had proper level crossing gates, whether they were the original ones, but they were painted with the red circle, like they really were railway level crossing gates. So yeah, the track would have run where that bungalow and that bungalow is now. I'm going to go down here and I'm hoping when I get up here a bit, um, we'll be able to get back onto the old track bed proper. So I've come a couple of hundred yards down this track. Um, the railway track bed would be the other side of this fence. Over there was an estate of houses built in the late 90s called Castle Park Farm. It was built by a company called Banner Homes. Now when we get to here, you can just see a bit of the old track bed. So I'm just gonna let this cyclist come off it and then I'm gonna carry on. So now it should be fairly easy to follow it most of the way. Um, and then it's the last bit we won't be able to do because it's in the RAF camp. So when we get to here, you can see even one of the old fence posts that would have fenced off the railway is still there. And uh, we just step up onto the old track bed and there's a sign. This is a permissive path. The public footpaths where we've just been, it's called the personal path and it's maintained by the Wendover Society. So we're gonna now follow the old railway line up here. I've now left the residential areas of Wendover behind me and I've followed the track bed out into the countryside. And it's quite exciting what happens when we get just up here. We're just going to go through these trees. When we get to here, we come to a little opening. And here we have the Wendover arm of the Grand Union Canal, which is like the railway, also disused. It was opened in 1799. Um, and it closed in 1897, so it lasted 99 years. And as the railway, the main line, not the one we're following, opened in 1892, for five years, Wendover had a railway and a working canal. Now, it's really just like a man-made river. It's very clear, it flows off down there. Further up, it becomes completely disused, but they are working on reopening it. And the last mile or so, is um, navigable. So perhaps one day, I don't know when, but perhaps we could walk the whole of this canal because it really is quite fascinating. But this was the only point, as far as I'm aware, it actually crossed a railway line. We're now going to go over this bridge here. It's called Oliver's Bridge. Obviously, this is not the bridge that carried the railway. Um, the, I believe the bridge that carried the railway was made out of sleepers. It was put up very quickly and the railway would have been built by um, German prisoners of war. So this would have been, they'd done it as quick as they can because they needed the railway. Oh, there's some ducks and ducklings coming towards us. Um, and then if we look that way, you can see down the canal looking towards Halton. If you follow the canal that way, you will go through Halton Village, which is really quite an attractive place. Now come off the end of the bridge and um, the railway line continues through the trees again. If you look, the old concrete fence posts are still here. 
which is quite nice. Um, where we're going to come up to soon was once part of Halton House. It was one of the Rothschilds houses, but the land was bought from them because they needed it to create the, um, the RAF camp during the First World War. So I'm going to carry on up here and um, go as far as we can go before we actually get to where I won't be able to access it because it'll be the RAF camp. So I've continued to follow the old railway along this section here. It's quite pleasant. It's quite a hot day today, but it's nice and cool here in the trees. And we've kind of come back up onto a bit of an embankment again. You can see the old concrete post there and there and there, which would have once fenced the railway line off. Um, one little embankment. It's not so much an embankment on that side, but again, you've got the same row of concrete posts. Now this is still a footpath at this point, but the footpath effectively um, runs out and so does where we can follow the railway. But there's a little bit more I can show you. Get to here, look, you've got footpath signs. So taking you off the railway that way, off the railway that way. As you can see, there's a footpath the way we came back to Wendover. Um, but there's no footpath that way, but it looks quite interesting because there's a sign here and you kind of go in. Someone's obviously had a little fire here, like it's like a little campfire and uh, it's like a little little sort of swing it's like a an action man or something could swing off that and then we go through here and there's a dead hedge and then the trap bed effectively ends so what we shall do we'll go back to the footpath um so we could go that way that's the direction we want to go in but i'm going to go this way so i can take you around the end of the trap bed oh look look at that there's um even an old piece of rail there interestingly that's a flat bottom rail i wouldn't have expected them to have used flat bottom rail but then why else would a piece of rail it, it's quite long be here so it must be off the old railway so yeah strange there's still a bit of railway line here um right what happens here okay we come out here that would take us to Wendover. There's Coombe Hill over there. Wendover Woods runs all the way along there. So the narrow gauge line would have run somewhere along the foothills of Wendover Woods. And as I said, it would have been used to bring timber. Um, and then they'd have exchanged it, taken it off on this one. I'm going to follow this path around here because this is the end of the track bed. And from here, the railway line would have curved off through the field to somewhere over there so th this this is the end of the trap bed now or not the end of the trap bed the end of um what we can see as the trap bed the railway line would have swung off around there somewhere if you look on google earth you can actually see it quite clearly a slight different color in the grass where the railway would have been now where those buildings over there are that is where the standard gauge line ended and the narrow gauge line began we're not going to be able to get in there because it is the raf camp which is understandable, but I've got an idea. I'm gonna take you somewhere over there where there's um, a church and the railway line would have passed near the church. That's probably the closest I'm gonna to get to show you the narrow gauge track bed. So it looks like I'm gonna continue across this path here. Um, I'm gonna go up there towards the RAF camp in Halton. So here we are in RAF Halton. This is a public road I'm on, so I'm allowed to be here. Now, the narrow gauge line I was saying about would have run approximately just the other side of where those trees are, where that fence is, and headed up that way into Wendover Woods. So that's all I can really show you of the track, because like I said, most of it is on the MOD land. Um, so, you know, I don't want to kind of just go walking in there, there filming. But what I'll show you is, um, this bit where well, I'm pretty sure it's all right to film. Um, coming up to the St George's RAF Church in Halton. Now, it's a fairly modern church. Well, I say modern, you know what I mean? Um, not a really old church, but look at it. I really like it. It's, I really like this big concrete window, with lots of different stained glass inside. I don't think we're going to be able to go inside it, but we can certainly go up closer and have a look. Um, I, I just think that's really nice sort of church I do like this era of churches um always been fascinated by the sort of the 60s and 70s churches that have this kind of concrete uh, you know slightly brutalist style windows 
The other very nice thing about here are all these um, all these roses. So I'm not going to walk any further um, into the RAF camp because you know for fairly obvious reasons. I'm going to leave the video here at St George's Church. So hope you enjoyed this little walk along um, a slightly different disused railway and um, a bit of narrow gauge railway. Thank you very much for watching and if you're ever out this way you know you could get a train from London Maribyrn to Wendover and do this walk for yourself. I'm now going to go a slightly different way just to make it a circular walk um, back to Wendover and go home. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Thanks very much. Goodbye.